Hey everybody, this is Kodak here, and it's time for some more Bakugan, and wow, has a lot happened since the last time I made a video about something. We've gotten some new rules, for example, Frost Strike now affects cards even after they have been given the effect of being made free, and you can now play any Evo at any time. So you don't have to play a more expensive Evo, you can play Diamond Evos on everything. Um, you, you can, uh, if uh, somebody plays Pact of Darkness and they pay the replacement cost, but the attacking Bakugan has Frost Strike, they still have to pay that Frost Strike cost. It's uh, it's interesting, it's made Aqua's Fangzor a whole lot more powerful. It's maybe made some other Bakugan more viable, but anyway, what we're looking at today is the second wave of carrying cases. I knew this would happen. I said this in my first video that I was sure that the other attributes would get represented by the cases in a later wave. And this new wave of cases features one for Auralis and one for Chaos. Sorry, Ventus fans. Man, sending that, uh, that invitation to the Spurned Attributes Club is looking awfully tempting now, um, which is a shame. Ventus has really kind of been getting the shaft when it comes to merchandise outside of the cards. I mean, I have plenty of Ventus cards, but when it comes to merchandise, Trox Ultra got short printed. Um, they are the only attribute to not have a carrying case, which is a shame because Winton's voice actor, Devin Mack, has actually been super active on Bakugan social media. So it's a bit of a shame that Ventus has been kind of left out. But anyway, what we are looking at today is the Auralis case. And the Auralis case is especially special because it includes the Bakugan Trino, which is one that we actually have not seen before. I mean, I, I needed another case anyway, so that's good timing. Now, with the Auralis case, they made it into this sort of weird orange color. It, it looks more like like Gatorade than it does gold, I'm afraid. I mean, I can sort of see a little bit of a reflective particulate effect, but uh, I kind of wish they'd gone all the way on it. You know, like, you know, some of those plastics you see like for girl things, like you like just totally go all out with the shiny particulate to make it look like pure gold. Anyway, moving on, it is unfortunately the exact same mold as the case I showed off before, which I believe means it will not be able to handle the cards in sleeves. I, I really hope that that if they make like a season two version of the case that they fix it a little bit so it can handle sleeves. I've already gone on a rant about that before, but anyway, taking a look here, it includes the uh, Bakugan Trino. It includes two cores, which look to be a fire fist and regular fist or attack and special attack. And uh, on the back, Oh, this might have been cool too if they made it out of like a golden style plastic, like actually make it opaque. I mean, I know they are technically not really allowed to do that, but they might have. Um, it looks like it's all the same Bakugan in here as they showed off on the back of the Pyrus box. And there we have Trino there, although I, I, I kind of wish they'd made it this actual metallic gold because what we had to get was the pearl gold. I guess they were worried that it might be uh, vulnerable to something, but... Uh, Bakugan storage case, exclusive Bakugan. Oh, so this is the only way to get Auralis uh, Trino. Two Bakugans and one character card. Um, for Chaos, they actually have Gortheon for Chaos, um, which is kind of weird. I was expecting it to be Pegatrix. It kind of tells me that uh, there was definitely a time where Bakugan was considering making Gortheon be Leah's signature Bakugan. I mean, I get why Gortheon's in there. It's a newer Bakugan. It's a little harder to find. Um, and I'd say it makes Chaos Pegatrix harder to find, but I have four Chaos Pegatrixes, so I, I can't imagine they will ever make the signature Bakugan that difficult to find. Anyway, let's get this thing open. And here we have the contents of the Auralis set. Uh, taking a look at this thing, yeah, it is the exact same mold as the Pyrus one, so sadly it cannot handle the sleeved cards, but it can still merge into the double-sided case. Anyway, getting back into it, yeah, this this orange plastic didn't really work out so well. I mean, you can kind of see little hints where they tried to make it shiny like gold, but based on the fact that I can't even pick it up on the camera, it's clear that that was a failed experiment. Like I said, I wish they'd gone like crazy or all out on this. This and the Chaos one to make it look like glistening light, you know, that would have that would have been cool. I mean, I know I would have bought that. I don't know if they were afraid that boys wouldn't buy something that, you know, looked like diamond or looked like gold, but... Who knows? Heck, maybe that's what the Chaos case is supposed to be, is a diamond case. Just think of it like that. But uh, yeah, it's essentially exactly the same, so there isn't really much to talk about. Anyway, moving on to Trino over here. And here we have Trino, the uh, apparently exclusive Bakugan that comes only inside this case, although I imagine it's only a matter of time before we see a Trino on its own. Trino, as you can see, it is another uh, 
Resurgence card with that little spiral there. It's not yet anything from the third set, although some cards from the third set has le have leaked, and apparently Aurelis is getting ability cards, which kind of ruins the whole groove they had going. But anyway, taking a look at Trino here, it is um, 305, which is actually kind of below par for an Aurelis Bakugan, and if it lands on a shield, it gets 400. I can't say I'm impressed here, so it becomes a 705 upon landing on a shield versus, you know, Orlis Fangzor, which became a 707 upon landing on a shield and had that powerful 700B power to fall back on if it didn't. Um, although an interesting thing about the shields is that they are uh, plus 50B plus 1 and plus 150B plus 1. They are the shields that behave like fists, uh, which, which is uh, kind of an interesting choice. I guess the idea is that the best defense is a good offense. Um, but anyway, looking at Trino's design here, I mean, yeah, it's a Triceratops, you, you can't really debate that, but, uh, oh, look at that, it's like covered in a ton of, like, flathead screwdriver screws, I wonder if I could take it apart like that, maybe, maybe not, um, but anyway, getting into the Bakugan itself, I have gotta say, there is a lot of nice paint detail on this guy, there is a lot of nice metallic paint, and th this thing looks great, it's probably one of the best looking aura lists that I have picked up yet, I mean, the fact that it, it has a lot of smooth parts to it, a lot of places that are kind of lacking in detail, although thanks to the fact that it's made with the Aurelis plastic, it still has a lot of nice, interesting texture of the metallic components to make up for it. Here we got the horns, here we got the legs. Um, Build-wise, it kind of reminds me of Tertonium with how it uh, with how it goes together. It has like the the leg flaps that are obviously going to pop out with the covered in those, uh, those little flathead screws and... Uh, I mean, the head's gonna jut forward with what I assume is supposed to be the, the Triceratops frill up here, but for a core, not a bad design. Um, got a lot of a lot of metal, a uh, lot of metal uh, paint down here. I, I love all these accents and how they really make it pop. The the, the the sort of coppery gold, the silver, and this this sort of black, this sort of like dark silver, this sort of gunmetal. I don't know if it was uh, this reflective on the other Aurelis I've looked at. Anyway, let's get this thing open. Yeah, as I figured, this guy uh, pretty closely resembles Tertonium in a lot of ways. The same sort of head flip out, the same sort of tail back here, the exact same sort of tail back here, the same flip out here. But, uh, you know, the original Bakugan did uh, did a fairly similar thing, so I can't really fault it. Uh, Trino has one extra step where you bring out the horns. He's got, like, little divots on the, on the, the frill so that you can do that. But, yeah, here is our Triceratops. He's got this uh, big old frill in the front that he rams forward when he uh, transforms. He's got the legs that fold out, although they don't seem to be spring-loaded. They just seem, they don't, well, at least they don't carry the same level of load that Tertonium does. But uh, anyway, looking around, we do have these, uh, the spots that we saw from the, on the frill, so that, that, that indicates to me that this is a frill. At first I thought there was like, supposed to be like the neck jutting forward, but no, it's the Triceratops frill, which for a core is actually a pretty clever design. It looks pretty good for a core. The, the face has a nice look to it. Let's see if we can uh, get a little light on that thing. Yeah, the eyes are uh, closely molded. We have the jaw under there, although the jaw is uh, hollow underneath. And uh, on the back here, we have the tail and uh, the B power here. Again, on the butt. At this point, I'm kind of convinced that B power stands for butt power because of just how often they print it on the butt. But um, yeah, we got a lot of that. A lot of that detail that springs out. There isn't really a lot of detail revealed by the transformation. Although again, it's a core. It, it, it's not really going to do that, but it does have that same sort of uh, shape on the bottom of its stomach, where its stomach is, kind of like Tertonium here, although it, it makes it look like a big old chunky uh, Triceratops, and yeah, if you retract the head and just put it back on the core, it like rams out with its head, that's kind of neat. Um, yeah, but like, like I said, it's a core, and cores have a habit of being pretty simple and straightforward. I mean, it still looks really good. It's one of the best Auralists that I have seen so far, especially since a lot of that color really pops against uh, against the other Aurelis color. The Aurelis are starting to look really, really nice, which I guess is appropriate seeing as Aurelis is apparently about to get their own card set, which gives them ability cards, as distressing as I find that fact to be. Honestly, I thought, I thought Aurelis being sort of a, an optional beat stick in exchange for one of your attributes was kind of nice, but it's looking like Aurelis cards basically give you a choice of two on-par abilities, which Two cards for the price of one is always powerful. Some people have discounted it already. I haven't. It's going to be interesting to see what happens when, since those on-par cards are attached to something so strong. But uh, yeah, that's a look at Trino, which I think might actually be my first Wave 5. And until next time, this is Kodak signing off.
was in her hand. Take a stand, saving everyone. Rock the bomb.